arm entanglement. Ude, arm. Gara means to wrap around or entangle. Okay? Often called the bent arm line. Right? Uh, lately it's becoming MMA in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the Kimura. Okay? Okay, great. But it's, it's Ude Garami. It's been Ude Garami for a long time and still is here. So there are two basic variations one up direction, one down direction. I want you, you guys, this is, that's a fundamental skill I think everybody should know, especially uh, if, you, you know, if you're a black belt, you should know this to teach it. Okay, so let's look on the basic up direction, okay? So aim your head toward James. There you go. All right, so different ways to put it on, okay? You can come across sideways from the top. I like to sit on the guy in a, in a lateral or a, uh, you know, yeah, I guess a, a, a vertical situation, I should say, where I get a better angle, especially on a big guy like this. I was always a fairly big guy, and I, I generally had to go against big chested guys, so that's why I did this particular style. So Anthony, you might want to come up from this angle and get a better shot. So, so even if you're starting from the side position, you might want to come over to the top and start working your move, okay? The key thing here to remember is have an arm under. We want to trap here, okay? We want to trap the wrist, elbow in the side here, and crank it. Okay. Now, there are a lot of variations, you know, the, the cool way to grab that and cool stuff to do. But the thing here is, this, this is one basic of the two basic variations, upward direction, guys, upward direction. Grab the, grab the wrist, but before you grab the wrist, I always like to snake under here. I, I like to grab in here, and he's, he might be fighting me, and I can get the wrist in, okay? Once you get the wrist, you got a high position on the shoulder, get a low position on the wrist, okay? And once you do that, you can either hook here or drive here first, totally dependent upon what the circumstance is. Some guys like to hook up, form their, their triangle here, their uh, figure four here, and then they drive their elbow in the side and crank. Some people teach, put the wrist on the, on the mat and crank up. I don't like to do that. If that works for you, do it, that's fine. But I like to have his arm up like this where I can crank it more. It puts more shoulder pain into it. It's not just an elbow lock, it's also a shoulder lock. And that's the Udigarami there, okay? A couple things to remember. When I'm doing this, it's probably, it, it's not an iron, iron fast rule or iron clad rule, but if you can, with your thumb, get a thumb hook on his wrist. It might not always be possible, okay? But try to grasp that, and then I can control that better. Now this hand, I'm probably just gonna meat hook it here. See that? Um, I've seen guys make a fist and crank even harder there. And that really gives a lot more torque too the side of the angle, turn like that, and it gives more torque in the wrist and the elbow. So either way, that works. But key things to point in, swing under here, snake under here, trap, elbow on the side of the neck. That's really important because there's your, there's your base, there's your anchor. Grab your wrist, however you do it, and crank upwards. I don't like to put it here and do that. I want the, I want the whole shoulder to move. And see how I'm doing it there. What he's going to do, he's going to try to power out. That's the most common way to stop that. So it's really important that I keep this nice and tight here and I keep pulling in as I do this. And it keeps him, if, I just, if this is just passive and not doing anything, he will get away, a strong guy like this. So once you hook it up in there, drive it here, keep pulling in toward his head and cranking. And that's a little point that really will help you keep that elbow in tight. And a lot of guys will. The natural thing is to try to power out of that. And it works fairly, Regularly, if you don't have a good figure four, uh, try, you know, uh, formed up there on the upper position. So that's the upper position. Do this. Raise up. All right. No tricks. Yeah, no, no tricks. Nice All right. I'm going to work on this side here. Look, this is just a, a, an old pro wrestler's trick. I probably saw the Mongolian stomper or somebody do this <laughs> when I was a kid. I don't know, but I've seen it years ago. I, I, you know what? The, knowing John Saylor, he's probably the guy to talk to me. So that's probably the situation. So, because he's a big catch wrestling fan too. But anyway, we've got the Udigarami going, all right? And this, this is good, okay? But what, what you can do if you want to add a little more torque by moving your, moving your wrist like this, rotating your, your, your forearm like this, helps do it. So from here, if I want to add a little more crunch to it, I just add this and just drive down. You can get a little more power, like you, you know, you're whacking something with a hammer hand, okay? And so I've got the Udi Garami, and it's just maybe not working. It's, even it's a tough guy. Angle this, and you can get a little more lift with your elbow, too. So there you go, like that. So this, this is good. You know, this is all good. But this may help 
get it a little more and crank it a little tighter. Just a little sly dog thing. That's and for the guys I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're the guys you don't know. Yeah, I don't want to do it. And, and, and really, realistically, it probably was John that showed me that because he's the kind of guy that would do this stuff. So, yeah. You know, God love him. But there it is. Try that a little bit. It's just it try both sides so you get to fit real. But again, you do get a lot of lift this way, but you get a little more lift this way by just, you know, I mean, it's, you know, like like a nail instead of driving something down, you know, do that. You don't smack down. You get a little more power this way. So, I don't know. It seems to work dynamically in the body mechanics. We're going to do the uh, downward version. Okay, we did the upward version. Okay, and there are two basic ways of the downward version. Kind of tend to come around and listen to this. All right. This one works pretty well off the side because you can get a better angle off the side. You can come from the top like we did before on like a mount position or Tate Shihogatami vertical. But this works really well because you get a little more crank from the side position. Okay, so we're working here. And when, when you're fighting this, a lot of times I'll be pushing away and everything. Again, we want to slide under here. We want to control the arm first here, okay? And now we're starting to set him up, okay? So that's the setup there. If I go to just grab his wrist, he knows something's happening and he doesn't like it. So if I, I come here first, I start to hug in tight, and now I've got him, okay? Now once I do this and kind of pop that elbow up, now I can start working things, okay? Now I can start filtering this under and catching here. So it's kind of like, you know, if it didn't have a gi on, you could see it a lot better, but hook it here and you start working there and you kind of filter it through. Now once you do, I got a good wrist grip here. If you have to meat hook them okay, it's pre preferable to have the hooking hand here like this. It just holds them better, okay? This one will meat hook instead of grabbing this way because I can crank better. But it, that's, again, opportunity. It's not a hard and fast rule. So we're working here. I hook it in here first, slide this in and catch it. I got my figure four going there. Now again, I've got this elbow here. Here's kind of my anchor here. Now, what I want to do, I want to prop this elbow here and crank it. Just like I had my elbow before in his neck and cranked it up, I'm going to put my elbow in his hip or ribs and crank up. So that, the, the, you see, see the common theme? You know, one in the neck, the other one in the ribs. So if I capture here and trap it, and so I've got him here pretty good. Now, here's where a lot of guys fail. They try to just crank from here and they have the hand here. Put your elbow here, that helps, and then crank, and it really hurts the shoulder. It really hurts the elbow, hurts the shoulder even worse, okay? So that's it. If, um, I usually, this is usually like my backup if I'm not getting the, the triangle or the arm bar because the guy's doing really good defensively. He's keeping his elbows in. His posture isn't too low, it's not too high. Okay, I can't really isolate an arm, but usually I can get a hold of, of a wrist or a sleeve. So if you can get a hold of it, you can pull this move off, okay? So all I need to do is Isolate the, the wrist or the arm or the sleeve that I want, okay? And then I start spinning out, okay? And as I spin out, I'm going to try and put my foot flat on the mat, okay? If you have a lot of trouble with it, just kind of go out like this, okay? Or put your, your leg flat. But the better you get at it, the tighter it's going to be. So pop out, put my foot down. Notice how I still have his arm, okay? As I sit up, grab a hold of his his waist or his belt line. I usually tuck my hand underneath his hip or his thigh right here because it makes it harder for him to roll out of it, okay? And it helps me break his balance. My foot's flat on the ground. I kick back like in a hurdler stretch and then I just lean forward a little bit. And the weight of, of my body coming down on his shoulder as well as cranking his, his wrist is what gets the quick tap. <clears throat> By the way, we call this the, the uh, like the kickover Udigarami. Udigarami is the bent arm lock. You're clearly bending his arm in this lock. And it's a very good starting position for this move. Right. So again, you know, this time I'll do it with the sleeve. I'm going to spin out and try and put my foot on, on the floor. Okay. Feet are on the floor. Sit up. Kick back. Lean forward. Notice the body position when he spins out, guys. When Derek's coming out, see how he's kicking out and over. He's giving himself space to, to spin out and actually did like he did a hurdler stretch. He, right. That's very correct in that. Foot down, sit up, kick back, okay? And w the beauty of, of this one is it doesn't have to be entirely back here because I'm leaning forward. He'll still get caught on my other hip. So yeah, you see how he's leaning kind of in the direction of Mike's shoulder to forward. Okay. 
My knee keeps his arm stuck, keeps his head down, and then sitting up is what does the, the crank on the wrist and the elbow, okay? See how his hips leave the mat? They come up. And again, that does cause a lot of pressure in that elbow. It's pretty nasty. Yes, yeah, so it's a really good arm lock. Okay, and if you have somebody who's really bendy, you can reach underneath his armpit on the far side, get your hands together, and just sit up and try and pull his shoulder. Okay, that allows you to put all your weight across him so he can't get back up again, plus you're, you're cranking him on the other side as well as the normal side. So you're literally trying to go like that with his shoulders. The nice thing about this too, guys, this is good for any type of a fight. It, we've seen it in MMA, we've seen it in submission grappling, no gi stuff, uh, and certainly with, with a gi situation because it gives us more handles to grab. Yeah. Okay, So this is the basic application of it. We'll do another one here in a minute. Okay, let's give it a try. So you're, you're, you're attempting a good rear naked choke, Kadaka Jume. Okay. Come over the top, catch it. So you got him a nice triangle going there. And now, while he's thinking triangle, with your left hand, you're grabbing his wrist. Now we're going to do some variations therein. Okay? So if he does manage to get his arms all the way around, okay, usually it's from this position, okay, because when my hand's underneath the armpit, it's a little bit more difficult for him to get his arms around. But if I do happen to be in this position and I can't break that grip off anywhere and try and get it bent underneath this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the other way. So whereas it would be in, in Udi uh, Garami this way, it's the same thing, but we're gonna go that way, more traditional grip, okay? So I'm gonna grab here, okay? Come through and get my grip, okay? But you'll notice I'm still nice and wide and I'm leaning back on him. If I lean forward, he comes back up and he takes my back, okay? So as soon as I get a good hold on that wrist that's held behind my back, okay, this other hand is gonna slide past. I don't go up and out, okay? I keep back here and you just slide it past his head and then grip up. Okay, and you can already see he's starting to kind of wiggle away from it because it's not too, too fun because I'm right there on the joint. Okay, what that does is it locks his shoulder joint in so that as soon as I start twisting, it's already starting to pop out. Okay, remember that the shoulder joint is just held in by, what is it, the labrum? The oh, muscle that's across the front? It's, it's a ball joint, it wants to move. You stop it from moving and then you start cranking it and it wants to pop out. Okay, so you lock the joint by putting your weight on it and then you twist. All right, so again, get a good hold, make sure that I've got my weight on him. Okay, slide up and entangle, and as I pop that hand free, get a hold of your wrist. Okay, and then just a twist like that. Okay, if I do manage to get up a little bit and he starts coming up on me, we're gonna just sit back on it. Okay, make sense? All right, let's hit it. So if I have this wrapped up tight, and I'm putting pressure, a lot of people start putting their hand right in your face, which is traditionally everybody knows is you know, spin on lock, right? So I, if I can't finish with the submission here with the neck, I will take, I just drop my head down, and I usually try to switch my arm right to the wrist on the other side. Now, when my grip here, I don't use the thumbs. I, when I, I rotate both hands over. This makes for a super fast spin on lock. I don't have to travel as far. I just dram up in the shoulder and I squeeze everything into me super tight. So this is very key on the pressure, okay? You know, you can do all this, some pressure out like this, but I like to have a little bit of movement. I don't want to change my position to tap him, so I just rotate here. And if you feel, you'll, you'll find out this is really working when you try it. So I'm sucking in really tight into my body and rotating. I just call him straight down like that and you'll feel a tweak there. But he went, just like yeah. he said, right into your chest. Like. Once I drop, I go right to a bent arm lock here. Now, when I, this is the part of my philosophy is to make it hard a little bit, you know. People have a good grip here, their grip breaks here. I like to take and drive my elbow into their ribs and I'll shake it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's also it's good to have a strong back. I tried to, if I wasn't here, I'd pick him up off the floor. When I try to spin, I'd lift up or bounce up and down with the elbow. 
Start driving back. It's really hard because it's, it's kind of shaking. Okay. Right? Down in the hip. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm also, I, I keep it up against my chest because I want to do the finish. And when I do a bent arm lock, I always roll my fingers over, like the opposite of what you do on a motorcycle. Roll them both over. Puts a ton of pressure and you don't have to have any movement. Up in here. It tightens everything up very quickly. We got Mike uh, and no gi here, so you can see the difference here. And they're not just a bunch of white, white gis here. So take a look. Derek might want to speak up because of the next door. So listen, this is a really nice, nasty kind of a slicer arm lock, bent arm lock. Um, we first have to give a shout out to uh, Jared Folks because he's the, the one who first showed this to me. He's the one who first showed it to, to Mikey as well here. And it's, it's pretty nasty the way he does it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in our, our same arm bar lever position. But sometimes you don't always get that hook. Sometimes they have a really deep grip like this and you have trouble getting your hands in. So what we're going to do instead is basically apply a, a bicep crush on it and make them let go or make them tap out from the crush. What's important to remember is I'm still putting my hand on the, the thigh over here so I lock his elbow in or if you've got a key you can also use it to keep that, that elbow locked in. I usually do the hip. Okay. Now I might add guys, remember the, the hand that Derek's doing it in case this case is left but it's the one that's the, the nearest to Mike's legs. Okay so if you think of it in those terms in this case, instead of left or right, the one closest to his legs, that's the one he's coming over, and his left hand is now anchoring on his thigh. So that's providing a good anchor, and it kind of traps the guy's arm. Okay. Right. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to take my leg that's closest to his belt or his legs, and I'm going to drape it across, almost like I'm crossing you know, my legs like this, but I'm going to put it down on his wrists. Okay. What this does is it starts compressing his elbow, Usually, they'll let go at that point, and if he does, I just grab it and go for the, the arm lock. But if he's a tough guy, he'll keep that, those hands together, and you bring that through, and just lean back a little bit, and that's where the crush comes from, okay? Now, if he's especially tough, we'll pop this through and get back, okay? Occasionally, he's super, super tough. You catch that, you roll to the side, bring this up, and then kick back towards his head. Okay, so first one, bring it down and just try and push down towards his chest and lean back, okay? It'll either pop back or it'll tap, okay? If you feel you need to, you can bring this up here and then just do that. And I'm not triangling to hold it, I'm triangling to push my leg down towards the mat. So once it comes up, you can stomp your foot down and that gets the tap, okay? And then if you really, really want to be mean about it, as soon as you catch this, you roll, and then you bring this up, and then kick back towards his head. Now, by the way, he's coaching, but with his right hand, he'd have it controlling. You know, you'd be using your right hand to kind of you oh, yeah. have in there. So, kind of show a little realistic like you'd be doing okay, it. Okay, so I'm coming through here, catch this. We can pop that through there and sit back, or I can catch through there and sit back, okay? If it pops free, boom, you've got the arm lock, okay? Likewise, if I'm here, coming through, and it pops through, we're going through for arm locks here, okay? So, you can also bring it up and pull through like this, and then squeeze, or bring that through, squeeze, okay? It's Good. really a nasty, nobody thinks it would hurt, but it does a lot. Yeah. It really does. And it's a win-win. You either get the, the, the tap from the crush, or he lets go of his, his hands or his wrist and you get the arm lock. So Yeah, you get the juju from there. Just remember, this foot controls the head until this foot comes over. If I try and do it this way, he sits up and now I don't have anything. Okay? So always keep control of his head with this one until you bring it over. Then it's okay to bring it back down and stomp that foot down because now I'm controlling his head as well as squeezing. Okay? That's, a good, that's a good point for control. Yeah, where his head is. Yeah, very good point. Good. Okay, want to try it, guys? Let's give it a go. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to go over a, uh, a bent arm lock. But it's basically Udi Garami, but we're going to be doing it from a case of Gatami utilizing your legs. Okay. So it works really, really well, and it's one of my favorites because you don't have to give up your position to do it. You don't have to give up your control. You, you spend all that time getting him into a good pin. Try things that don't require you to get out of the pin first before you go for something that requires you to get out of the pin. 
So in as much as I love Juji Katami, I'll try this first because you might get a quick, easy win out of it. All right? So first things first, we've got them in a good case of, all right? And I'm going to isolate the arm, okay? People tend to forget what's going on with this arm besides just hooking it up, okay? So usually once you've thrown them, you've got a good grip on the sleeve anyways, and it's already pulled up here if your posture is correct. So it's pretty simple. Once you land, you isolate that wrist, okay? And I'll lean down a little bit towards his face so that he has to get around my chest and up before he gets free, okay? If my posture is way up here, okay, it's easier for him to get around in a way. All right, so as we land, isolate that arm, okay? And then we start pushing the wrist down. And as soon as we get it about halfway, we're gonna put it behind the knee, okay? Because that's the easiest way to trap it. Boom, trap, okay? Once we get it there, we're gonna turn, and you'll usually get a good uh, tap out of it pretty quickly. If you don't, you can adjust and stick it underneath the, uh, the ankle, okay? Putting it directly under the ankle, you know, will work if you can get your ankle up there real quick. If you can't and you're not as bendy, put it under your knee, okay? And then try it once real quick. If he's super bendy, adjust from there because I don't have to lift my, my ankle up too high, okay? So again, he's here. I isolate that wrist. I push it down, and as soon as I get it free, I hook my knee over it, okay? If I turn and he's not tapping, it's my hip is going into his elbow that's causing the tap. So literally, I'll try and turn over and go belly down. And if you want, you can even grab behind his head and turn this into Munigatami. And by the time you get to Munigatami, he will usually tap, okay? If you want to play around with it a little bit more, like I said, you go here, he's not tapping. I'm just going to shove it down a little bit, and that'll usually work. All right? Questions? All right, let's do it. Sorry. Which way you're going to roll. Um, and what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to try and dig under and grab his leg as I go through. Okay, that way, no matter what, I'm always going to come over correctly, and it'll make it a little bit easier to roll. Because uh, for this one, if you're not rolling that way, you don't get your arm in between his head and you, you make it a lot harder on yourself to get over. And it's a lot easier for him to pull his arm out in transition. Okay? So as I come through here, I'm going to reach underneath and try and grab the leg underneath here. Okay? Reach through, grab that leg. See how it automatically, we automatically come over? Okay? And then I can pull it and pull it by hand. Now, with his left, his left leg or his left arm, guys, he's reaching real through. He's extending by doing it. The shoulder's really tight to the, the mat now. Now, when he grabs, I'm trying to get so you can show you what he's grabbing there. There, see it? He's grabbing the inside of Mike's right leg, his thigh. Now that that's just his trap, okay? And then he just keeps rolling over through with it. That keeps them all nice and balled up and rolled for me. It makes me roll the, the same direction. So it's hard for me to roll the wrong direction because I got his leg, okay? And then when I finish, just pull and pull the hand. If you need to, you can grab with both hands. Just through there, reach through here, grab, come through. Okay, I've got his knee in both hands. Pull. So that may help if the guy's stronger than you, where he's got a really solid, you know, back ride, like a, like a spiral ride type thing. This might be a good way to do that by grabbing with both arms to help pull him in and suck him in as you roll. Right. Yeah. He's particularly stupid and he tries to stand up while you're doing this to pull his arm out. It's, that's the way you counter that, is you just grab his leg as he stands up and you flip him over. Um, we're not going to cover that today because it's really nasty and I want to make sure that you guys get this first. When you've got more control, we can try and go back to the level where he stands up. Well, reach through and grab. Okay, reach through and come over. Got his leg. Pull sideways, boost my arm. And just turn and face him. So that's just a slight variation that may help you if you're having trouble getting in and rolling over that left shoulder. To, to you know this rolling uh, udigrami. All right, let's give it a try, gentlemen and ladies back there. Ah.
So if, if, the, if the top man stands up to stack you, okay, watch Derek do this. Derek, talk us through it real quick. So he's, he's stacking me, and it doesn't matter if he's on his knees or if he stands up, but it's easier if he stands up. So I have the Juji Gatami arm from here, but instead of going for the hanging arm bar, I'm gonna snake my arm through and grab the back of his elbow. And what that's gonna do is if he's up here, I can still catch it and pull him back down to me, get a hold of the wrist, and then wrap through. And as we do that, I'm gonna head roll. So you just roll him right over into really a upside down Udigarami. Yep. Okay, so he goes up. Okay, snake through, catch, 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 and then head roll. All right, one more time. Guys, we'll let, let them do this one more time, and then we'll go on to some other drills. Okay, snake through, catch, catch. Boom, head roll. You finish off that, that rolling and the momentum, all the body weight really forces that up. There you go, kind of a... Uh, Udigarami from a stack. All right, Andre's on top, and he's, look at that left hand on the knee, okay? Okay, now TJ's on the bottom. TJ's gonna do an Udigarami, the bent arm lock from the bottom, but no, notice Andre is kind of high. He's just not on his knees or down, and he's not immobile. He's up, let's, let's get a back view here. See, he could be, he, he might even be partially squatting at this point, but he's gonna be in this position where it's a real fast dynamic position, and he's gonna be, trying to pass guard, okay? At this point, as soon as that left hand of Andre's is on the knee, watch what TJ, he grabs quickly and he rolls to the right hip, comes over, loops over, okay? Catches the uh, key lock there, he grabs his own wrist, all right? And you can see here, and now he's going to swing under and do an Udigarami from the bottom, bent arm lock from the bottom, okay? Can you do that when you're a little higher up? So he, he may be standing, okay, and he's starting to starting to pass, okay, so he reaches with one hand, he traps, catches, comes over the top, and he swings over and he does an Udigarami, finishes him. So, so go ahead and Kendrick and grab up there, Vlad. Now watch when he's doing this, he's starting to, don't get too fast ahead of me, that was beautiful, but let's do it slower, okay? We're showing the move now. All right, especially for lightweights, this is where you wanna really stay round. We always say stay round, guys, watch. S slow down a second again. Okay, come back to guard. Okay, there you go. All right, boom, he's fighting him. He's in guard. Look, left hand grabs the wrist, just like before. Remember that? Okay, we're going to start setting up that bent arm lock. Now he rolls over. See how he's rolling over on his left hip? Now watch the right foot come in there. Now, sit up just a second, Vlad. We kind of can't come. Now look, you see he had the, see he has a right foot right jammed in Vlad's right hip? In the jam there, see? Okay, go ahead and back down where you were. And see how he's down, and he's just going to roll backward and roll him over into it. He stopped there to them. There you go. He come over and a really nice crank, okay? Let's do it. Go ahead and do it normal speed, and I'll have Vlad do some on you, too. You can kind of watch how he does it, everybody. Catches here. Sorry, I had a bad camera angle. Do it one more time, then let Vlad do it on you, because he's got a good one, too. This is especially good for lightweights because you don't have a lot of body mass to do this turn. Right over on top and you finish. We're working on a head trap Udigarami. Okay. Anthony, show that on Josh again, would you? So basically Anthony traps Josh's head, traps it over, catches it. He, now he gets the Udigarami, but notice he still has the head in there. Now you could probably apply Udigarami from this position, but what he does is he slips his elbow over, jams the elbow on the side of the neck, and makes it happen. So it's a, it's a little nastier Udigarami. It's, it's a basic technique that um, is uh, fundamentally sound and, and very good in a real situation. So you trap it, you slide the head over, and then you got the Udigarami. A lot of people think they're safe if their head's in there, uh, and sometimes they are but you can still make the Udigarami happen, but this is definitely, get the habit of sliding over and see how you drive your elbow right in the side of his neck. All at the same time, so it becomes more of like a ground transition. So he comes in, okay? He's really overextended. Go ahead and put your hands together. Okay, he's overextended himself by giving me all of his elbows. He's got a, a, a gable grip there, okay? He might have an S grip, doesn't really matter. The, the real point is that his wrists are right in front of my chest, which makes a bent arm lock super simple. Catch that, catch that, 
okay? Pop it down until I can catch my own wrist, okay? Now, I can do the Soden still, but what I can also do is the opposite direction. So what I'll do is I'll try the Soden, boom, and then he posts out so I can't do it. See, oh, not working. I'm gonna go the other direction, because now he's committed. See, you just kind of go in a loop. You're, once you get all the way over, you block his head with your, your leg so he can't keep flipping over. So we'll do that one real quick. All right, he's overcommitted again. He's got his hands together. His wrists are in, in front of my chest. Super easy to get a hold of it. Catch, come through, pop his wrist down enough to catch your own wrist. You'll have to post on your head. Try the Soden, boom, he posts out so I can't roll. Okay, not happening, so I'm gonna go the other way. Boom, all the way through. As this other knee comes over, and I'm all the way over now, I post on there and I bring my other one up and I block him, okay? And that makes it super easy to finish. If I don't block him, he keeps turning and he comes over, no move, okay? So as soon as I'm here, and I know I'm gonna switch over and try and finish this, knee, put your weight on him, lock his head with that other leg. Then finish. <laughs> All right, it's ready. Well, one, start. Yep. All right, okay, guys, what we're gonna work on, Udegarami, arm entanglement. It's the bent arm lock, okay? Arm Ude, arm, garami means to wrap or to entangle. And a particularly sneaky way of doing it is the one off the bottom guard here that Mike likes to do, and, and Derek has done it a lot too. So, Mike, I'm going to let you take it from here and just let him have it. Anything you need to add? Why, Derek, you need to add, add to it? Let's go get him. Well, I, I tend to think about the gazoosh a lot when I'm doing this. I really want to break their, bo break their uh, posture so that I break their balance to knock them over. And so when, you, when you've got a really strong guy gripping up on you, what you need to do here is get him to plant because he doesn't ever want to plant. And so once you're here, you can start to feel his body shift for that kazushi. And so what I like to do is get real deep and just swim up top, shoot my hips, and really kind of press over and try to get, just keep in real tight, wrap your, wrap your wrist, don't hook the thumb, and just drive up. Now, some points here that Mike's doing, uh, Mike, when you go ahead and do that again, pop in there. See how he plants now? Everybody, if you can see, I'm gonna get in front of the camera. Okay. Come back out slowly. He, this is the anchor hand. Bam, see that? Anchor on that wrist. Now, what, look what Mike did. He rolled into Derek. He didn't stay on his back. He's active now. He's up on his haunches here. And look how he came over, and he got this nice key lock position here like this, okay, and this, this, this grip. And then he comes back, and he settles back in. He rolls back in. He's kind of in the shape of the L. The body's in the L shape. But look at the way Mike rolls it, and look at the way he finishes. And when he finishes, he's kind of like See how he's sideways, but look at the leg across here, and the other leg is planted on the mat here, and he's just pinching Derek's body in between them. He's, he's stuck, okay? These, these are the fundamental things that really work. Now, with his elbow is pushing down, the wrist is pushing up, and there you got the pain, okay? It's a shoulder lock as much as it is an elbow lock, but it certainly is an elbow lock. But notice how he rolls, he traps, and he comes over, and there he rolls to finish. And Mike, you have a little bit of weight, you like to roll your leg over a little bit to add a little more oomph to it, I know. And he'll, he'll roll his, kind of roll to his body to the right, so, or yeah, to your left, I guess. So watch how he does fairly slow, and he kicks the leg over a little more, see that? That adds sometimes to it. But get We're doing a, kind of a mat work Uchikomi drill for the Udigarami. Bottom man, Tori, the attacker is going right side, left side, spinning under the top man, Uki. Back and forth, just drilling on the Udigarami, just working on getting position and working all the small details out. It's a 30 second drill, do as many good ones as you can in about 30 seconds. Mate!